Hi, I'm Alan Douglas. Welcome to my studio. Today I'll be showing you the initial exploratory lay-in of acrylic for this small painting that I'm going to call the Belted Rock Chopper. Let's get started. So this is the Belted Rock Chopper. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing the initial lay-ins of acrylic. Lately I've been doing my paintings about 80% acrylic and then switching to oils for the last couple painting sessions, which is what I anticipate doing with this one. Um, now, unlike my client work, this is an independent project. And what I usually do is sometimes I don't do color study. Sometimes I just jump in and start exploring a color direction just in paint. So I have a vague idea of where this one's going. I'm, I'm thinking it's maybe a misty quarry, um, a little bit foggy. Um, so the first thing I want to do is knock back some of these black lines. This is just a uh, drawing in pencil on gator board, which has been pre-treated with um, acrylic gesso just in case I switch to oils, which I sometimes do. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is kind of knock back some of those. If I want to get a misty feel, I need to knock back some of those black lines so it's not as, as dark. So that's the first, especially for these background chunks of rock. Those will be farther back in the background, so those will be almost barely visible. But you can see how knocking that back helps a lot just to achieve a misty atmosphere from the get-go. I should also mention that once I finished the pencil drawing, I did spray it with a workable fixative. A couple light layers of that. And what that does is it keeps the pencil from coming up into the paint. This is the workable fixative I was talking about. You don't want to use crystal clear because that provides a permanent plastic coating to your picture. Whereas the workable gives it a little tooth and allows you to work on top of it. I haven't really decided what direction I'm going, like I mentioned, with the color. I'm thinking I'll just put some worms up near his head because I'm going to want the viewer's eye to go up towards his head a little more. The other thing is, since he's a belted rock chomper, this streak of feathers right here is going to be considered his belt. So I need to decide of what color to make that. You can see I'm using my paper towel here just to remove a little of the excess paint because I don't want to, I want to keep everything very thin right now because I'm not quite sure what direction it's going to go in. I almost want to just have it be very monochromatic and just play with temperature shifts more than anything. So you can see what I'm doing is having it warmer up towards his head and then cool down as he comes into the shadows here. The beauty of acrylic is it dries so quick if I don't like something I can paint over it pretty quickly after it dries. Not sold on the red belt yet. I almost think maybe I should leave the reds up near the mouth and have a different color for that belt. So let's try that. Let's see what it looks like with a cool belt. I think I like that better. You can see I'm tamping up some of that excess paint just because at this early of a stage, I really don't want to lose that drawing underneath. And I think 
if I'm having reddish tones appear up here, I have a feeling I should repeat them somewhere else in the painting. And what I'm thinking the best place to do that would be is down on his legs. Some birds have very pink legs. I'm starting to like the direction this is going. You can see it's just kind of a little bit of guesswork based on what I know works in the past. These days, a lot of times I don't do color comps, especially for a small painting like this. If it was a major undertaking, I probably would do a color comp, probably digitally. Um, but sometimes if you plan too much out, it takes the fun out of the painting process a little bit. You gotta let some things evolve organically as you paint, I find. Don't know if I like that so much. Let me glaze in some yellows a little bit. It'll mix with that blue a little and possibly give it a slight greenish cast. I think I like that. Now the area around the eye I'm envisioning is maybe bare skin. Like some of your vulture species. So maybe that should be also along the kind of pinkish, orangish line. Again, I don't want the paint to get too thick because I want to be able to see through it. This will probably get a little misty and foggy here towards the bottom. But that at least gives you a little bit of insight into my initial thinking as far as how I approach color and what direction it might go. These colors are not necessarily set in stone. I may change them along the way, but I'm starting to like the direction it's going. Thanks for watching.